since you mentioned open pilot, I'd love to get an update in the uh, company number one, Calm AI world. How are things going there in the development of uh, semi-autonomous driving? You know, almost no one talks about FSD anymore and even less people talk about open pilot. Mm -hmm. We've solved the problem. Like we solved it years ago. What's the problem exactly? Well, how do you, like, what, what, what does solving it mean? Solving means how do you build a model that uh, outputs a human policy for driving? Mm -hmm. How do you build a model that given a you know, reasonable set of sensors outputs a human policy for driving? Uh, so you have you know companies like Wayman Cruise, which are hand coding these things that are like quasi human policies. Mm -hmm. Then you have Tesla and maybe even to more of an extent, comma, asking, okay, how do we just learn the human policy from data? The big thing that we're doing now, and we just put it out on Twitter. At the beginning of Comma, we published a paper called Learning a Driving Simulator. Mm -hmm. And the way this thing worked was it's a it was an autoencoder and then an RNN in the middle, right? Uh, you take an autoencoder, you compress the picture, you use an RNN, predict the next state, and these things were, you know, it was a laughably bad simulator. Right, this is 2015 era machine learning technology. Today, we have VQ, VAE, and transformers. Mm -hmm. We're building Drive GPT, basically. <laughs> Drive GPT. Okay. Uh, so, and it's trained on what? Is it trained in a self supervised way? Yeah. It's trained on all the driving data to predict the next frame. So, really trying to uh, learn a human policy. What would a human do? Well, actually, our simulator is conditioned on the pose. So, it's, it's actually a simulator. You can put in like a state action pair and get out the next state. Okay. Um, and then once you have a simulator, you can do RL in the simulator and RL will get us that human policy. So it transfers. Yeah. RL with a reward function, not asking, is this close to the human policy, but asking, would a human disengage if you did this behavior? Okay. Let me think about the, the distinction there. Would a human disengage? Would a human disengage? That, um correlates i guess with human policy but it could be different so it's it uh it doesn't just say what would a human do it says what would a good human driver do yeah. and uh such that the experience is comfortable but also not annoying in that like the thing is very cautious yeah. so it's a nice, finding a nice balance that's that's interesting it's a nice it's asking exactly the right question what will make our customers happy right a system that you never want to disengage because usually disengagement is this, almost always a sign of I'm not happy with what the system is doing. Usually. Um, there's some that are just, I felt like driving, and those are always fine too, but they're just going to look like noise in the data. But even I felt like driving. Maybe, yeah. That's Maybe. Even that's a signal. Like, why do you feel like driving? You're, <laughs> you need to uh, recalibrate uh, your relationship with the car. Okay, yeah. so what that that's really interesting. Um how close are we to solving self-driving? Um it's hard to say. We haven't completely closed the loop yet. So we don't have anything built that truly looks like that architecture yet. Mm -hmm. We have prototypes and there's bugs. Um so we are a couple bug fixes away. Might take a year, might take 10. <laughs> What's the nature of the bugs? Are these uh these major philosophical bugs, logical bugs, what kind of what kind of bugs are we talking oh, about? No, they're just like they're just like stupid bugs. And like also we might just need more scale. Um, we just massively expanded our compute cluster at Gamma. Mm -hmm. Uh we now have about two people worth of compute, 40 petaflops. <laughs> well, people people are different. Yeah, uh, 20 petaflops. That's a person. I mean, it's just a, it's just a unit, right? Horses are different too, but we still call it a horsepower. Yeah, but there's something different about mobility than there is about uh, perception and action in a very complicated world. But yes. Well, yeah, like of course. It. Not all flops are created equal. If you have randomly initialized weights, it's not going to. Not all flops are created equal. Some flops Hots. are doing way more useful things than others. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. Okay. So more data. Scale means more scale in compute or scale in scale of data? Both. And um, diversity of data? Diversity is very important in data. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have, so we have about, I think we have like 5,000 daily actives. How would you evaluate how uh, FSD is doing? Pretty well. Self-driving. Pretty well. 
How's that race going between Kamei and FSD? Tesla is always one to two years ahead of us. They've always been one to two years ahead of us. And they probably always will be because they're not doing anything wrong. What have you seen that's since the last time we talked that are interesting architectural decisions, training decisions, like the way the way they deploy stuff, the architectures they're using in terms of the software, how the teams are run, all that kind of stuff, data collection, anything interesting? I mean, I know they're moving toward more of an end-to-end -end approach. So creeping towards end-to-end -to -end as much as possible uh, across the whole thing, yeah. the, the training, the data collection, everything. They also have a very fancy simulator. They're probably saying all the same things we are. They're probably saying we just need to optimize, you know, what is the reward? Will you get negative reward for disengagement, right? Like everyone kind of knows this. It's just a question of who can actually build and deploy the system. Yeah, I mean, this good. It requires good software engineering, I think. Yeah. And, and the right kind of hardware. Yeah, the hardware to run it. And... You still don't believe in cloud in that regard? I have a compute cluster in my uh, office. 800 amps. Tiny grad. It's 40 kilowatts at idle, our data center. Dives me crazy. We have 40 kilowatts just burning just when the computers are idle. Just when I... Oh, sorry, sorry, compute cluster. <laughs> <laughs> compute cluster, I got it. It's not a data center. Yeah, yeah. Now, data centers are clouds. We don't have clouds. Data centers have air conditioners. We have fans. That makes it a compute cluster. <laughs> I'm guessing this is a kind of uh, a legal distinction. That's sure, to make. yeah. We have a compute cluster.